Hi, this is Ian with Sterilizer Autoclave Solutions, and today we are doing our two-year preventative maintenance on a Statum G4 5000. First thing we're going to start with is the cassette seal. So we're going to remove this cassette. I am placing it on top of the unit. However, I have a stat mat, so I'm not going to scratch the paint. I'm going to separate the top from the bottom, setting the bottom off to the side. Using a small flathead screwdriver, I'm going to put it on the back side of the seal and gently work it out. You try not to stab the seal as you're getting it out. Once it pops out, you can roll the rest of that seal all the way out. This is a new seal, so I will be reinstalling this one. However, we do want to inspect our cassette, make sure there's no rust or debris anywhere inside this cassette. If there is, you can use Scotch-Brite, Barkeeper's Friend, anything non-abrasive to help clean up that rust. Just make sure you rinse it out. Once we know that's good, I'm going to take some of the provided lubricant that comes with the new seal, and I'm going to pour about half this vial into the middle of this cassette. Next, I'm going to take the cassette seal, put a couple fingers in the lubricant, and just well lubricate this seal all the way around. We want to find the holes on the back and the nubs on the top. We're going to take those nubs, match it up with the back of our cassette, and just gently place your seal in there like so. We're going to start in one of the corners just by pressing in and up and try to line up your nubs in the corners. We're going to do that to all four corners. Once all four corners are done and the, the nubs are in the corners, take it on the short side and we're just going to press that in. Go to the other short side, just kind of press into place. When you get to the long side, we're going to split the difference right in the middle, kind of press that in and work our way out. You will get bubbles. That is okay. It will slide into place. Once that is all the way in, we're going to re-lubricate one of our fingers, and I'm going to put it right between the grooves of that seal. I'm pressing in and up. I'm going to run my finger all the way around the seal and you will feel it set into place. We want to inspect and make sure as we see our seal is off by a little bit, those square blocks should be directly in the center. So I'm going to slide this over. I'm sliding this over by putting my finger back in that groove, pressing in and pushing in the direction that I want it to go. Those, that looks pretty good. We want to inspect the corners and make sure that our nubs are in the corners. If you do need to adjust, you can once again put your finger in the groove and slide. That looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to wipe out this cassette. This will leave residual water on your lid. You can use stat dry to cut down on that oil. Next thing we're going to do is put our top and our base back together. Give it a good squish test. You want to squeeze it and make sure that you have air coming out the back. I'm going to set this off to the side. We're going to move on to the back of the unit. The back of the unit, you have your biofilter right here, and we are going to remove that. Set that off to the side. I'm going to start with our biofilter bracket with the screw on the middle. You might have to maneuver the cover from one side to the other, but there is no play in that. There is play on the sides. We are going to change our biofilter. If we look, we do have an arrow on our biofilter bracket as well as on our biofilter. I'm going to slide that back into place. 
And to put this filter back into place, you push up on the top and it'll simply snap into place. And we are going to remove your compressor filter. Not all statums have a compressor filter. If you do, it will be located directly underneath of your biofilter. This will simply just unscrew. And we are changing that for our PM. Next thing we're going to do, there are seven screws that hold this top cover on. There are three in the back. The one located right here in the center of this bracket, the bracket will come off with it. And there are two on either side. Once you have all seven screws removed, what we're going to do is you want to make sure you have room on the left side of the unit. I'm going to remove my stat mat. And I'm going to bring the front legs to the edge of the counter. What that does, that allows for that front to tip up. Grabbing on the back of the unit, I'm going to lift up and slide the entire top cover forward. Once you feel it clear, you can roll this top cover off to the side. You always want to make sure you're unplugged when you're doing this. You have a couple of ribbon cables depending on the year of your unit, on how they are set up. This one does have a power supply board, so I'm going to unplug our logic board from the main board. Once my ribbon cable is unplugged from the main board, I'm going to follow back where the power supply board logs in, and I'm going to unplug that as well. That will free up my top cover to be moved to the side. At the back of the unit is where we're going to be focusing. We have our check valve. This is on our two-year PM list. If you have an OEM check valve that looks like this, you will need a 9 16 This will simply pull off, and this will unscrew. You want to make sure that there are no threads, any of this red that's on here, um, that will not get into that boiler. Our new one will go right back on. And when you tighten this down, it does not need to be torqued on, but you do want it to be firm. We do want to reattach our tube to our check valve. The new check valve does come with a new zip tie. However, I did not change this check valve as it is brand new. The last thing we're gonna do under the cover is inspect our solenoid. This top nut is an 11 16 and I'm going to break that nut free. Just set that off to the side. As you see, our wires go up on our solenoid, and in this metal bracket, there's an opening on the top. This will slide out of the way. You can remove your pump recovery tube if you need. That is a 3 8 There is a specific tool to take this off. However, most people do not have that, so we're going to use some straight jaw locking pliers. When you grab this, as you see, it is thick and then gets skinnier and then thick again. You do not want to grab on this bottom part. You only want to grab on the top. Reason being is this is hollow. If you grab down here, you can damage the stem and at that point you have to replace the solenoid valve complete. So I'm going to grab on the top of this. Once it breaks free, on the inside you have a stem and a plunger. So as we see, that is pretty dirty. I'm going to tip this upside down and we have our spring on the inside. We can try to clean this up without having to replace any parts. We want to inspect, so I'm gonna use some Scotch-Brite and go over this entire stem without dropping it. 
And the big thing we're looking for is damage to this rubber plunger. There is a small groove. If that groove is, is protruding out, then we want to replace this with a plunger repair kit. If this was going back into use, I would be cleaning that up fully. On the inside of here, do you see all the discoloration? I'm going to take that same scotch right pad and move that around on the inside. A lot of the stems from the OEM have a spacer in the bottom. I'm going to use that same flathead, kind of push it in and push it to the side. I'm going to see if there is a We are going to remove that spacer, and if we were doing a plunger repair kit, we would not be putting that back in. That can cause issues. You want it nice and shiny on the inside. What we are looking for is this plunger to move freely. So I'm going to put the spring back inside the plunger, put the plunger in like that, flip it upside down, and this should move up and down rather freely. If it does not, you could have a bad stem, a bad plunger, a bad spring. At that point, give us a call. We can figure out exactly what you need. Putting this back on, you will see that there is the old O-ring. If you do not have a new O-ring, you want to try not to damage this O-ring. This one, however, is pretty well dry rot. So we are going to be replacing that O-ring. I'm going to take the same Scotch-Brite and just maneuver it around on the inside. If this one was going back into service right away, I would be cleaning this a lot better and using a vacuum to actually pull all that debris out. I am going to replace this o-ring. That o-ring will slide right down in. We're going, to, we're going to take the plunger, holding it like this with the, plunger, with the plunger covered by my finger. I'm going to roll it upside down and just kind of drop it into place. You do not want to lose that spring. You do not want to lose that plunger. Once again, once that's tight, I'm going to grab my locking pliers, not grabbing below the narrower part, and just torque that on a little bit. It does not need to be over tight. You do want it to be snug though. Taking the clamp, I'm going to put that back over, the wires facing up. With our wires up and the bracket with the opening at the top, we're going to tighten down this nut. If you did use locking pliers, it might have messed up a couple of the threads, but it still will tighten on. Using that 11 sixteenths, I'm going to snug this down. And generally, you just want to have it facing the same direction it was, towards the compressor. This does not need to be torqued on there super tight. Next, what we're going to do is put our cover back on. Again, you want to make sure you have space to the left of the unit. I'm going to take the top cover and set it on its side next to the unit. As you can see, I'm going to replug in our ribbon cable from here. That will just snap into place. This particular unit does have what's called a power supply board, which is right here up front. That power supply board is located, there. it'll plug in on the back side of your logic board. And there is a bracket where that will snap into place. Wherever that might be. There it is. That keeps those wires out of your way. 
If I was putting this back together for good, I would turn the power on, make sure that the screen works. However, for demonstration purposes, I am not. Next, what we're going to do is roll the cover back over the front, just like so. Should be at about that angle. And we're going to simply walk this back on. Again, you want to make sure that this unit is unplugged whenever you are taking the cover on and off. The ribbon cables can get caught and it should slide into place. You want to be about that angle. Make sure you clear the back and the whole thing will snap into place. On the back back here, we have our biofilter bracket with the single screw. I usually like to start with this middle one because that one, there is no play in. You might have to move the cover one side. We have four more screws that hold this unit on. Seven total. Sometimes these will be a little out of adjustment. You might have to push down on the top to get that to seat down correctly. If you have any questions with your two-year PM kit on your Statum 5000 or any of your other autoclaves, please give us a call. 704-966-1650. Option 3 for free tech support. Thank you.